Roswell, New Mexico, a small backwater town in the middle of a small backwater state, consisting largely of farms and farms. Oh, sure, sure, ranches. New Mexico is also home to the White Sands National Park and the infamous White Sands Missile Range, where the world's first atomic bomb was tested, so they have that going for them. But this isn't the where that our story begins. The where is Omicron per CI8, located in the constellation Lyra, some 32 and a half light years away, a cold white dwarf star in the Omicron per CI8 star system. And we know what you're thinking. You're thinking cold is a subjective reference relative to other balls of nuclear fission floating in free space, where the largest of them reach 25,000 Kelvin. That's about 44,540 degrees Fahrenheit or 24,726 Celsius. Yeah, but no, we actually mean cold. The researchers used NASA's Hubble Space Telescope to analyze its pattern of light. They found Omicron per CI8, also known as 1826 plus 2650, no hotter than a negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. That's also negative 40 degrees Celsius. In 1915, his home planet, tired of being cold, began sending out fleets of explorers in hopes of finding a warmer climate to call home. Now, we are not talking about massive in scale. Some galactic dominating stellar armada with planet-sized vessels here. No, no, no. We are speaking of massive in scope. Hundreds of thousands of tiny little ships, about the size of a two-seater Honda, for a journey, in Natero's case, which would last 32 and a half years. But I digress. On July 4th in the Lord's Year of 1947, Knight Terror reached the promised land of Roswell, New Mexico, a small town of mostly farmland, and by all accounts already conveniently adorned with so many UFO themes that he was already feeling at home. At first, and why wouldn't he, he believed that cats were the dominant life form on the planet. He may still be correct. Nevertheless, Upon abducting one for first contact, tragedy unfolded. Though most of us mere earthlings understand what to put a cat in a car means. Poor Nitero could never have been prepared. Nitero's vessel smashed into the farm of Mac Brazel. Uh, sorry. The ranch, ranch of Mac Brazel, and would soon become mired in conspiracy and cover up. The US Air Force would ultimately respond to the site, refute original reports of an alien saucer crash, and call it a high-tech project mogul weather balloon. While witnesses claim the military removed all the debris and absconded with the body of a dead alien pilot into the now legendary Hangar 18, where his ship was to be reverse engineered, and Mitero was to be autopsied. In recent years, a video has surfaced claiming to be footage of the autopsy. In truth, Nitero didn't die in the crash at all. He was taken into custody. Evaluating his situation, he recognized that the world of these ape creatures was not of sufficient technological development to repair his ship, that he wasn't going anywhere soon, and the temperatures on Earth were stifling for his cold-blooded body. And so he reverted his physical form, metamorphosizing, first into a ball of black ooze. And from that black ooze, he would be reborn, guided by DNA samples from his captors themselves, into what would appear to be a baby human boy. But this was no normal human boy. A team of scientists were gathered to look after his upbringing, to raise him as a normal boy. A surrogate family was selected for him complete with three older brothers. And while waiting for the Earth to develop, Nitero himself would be given a chance to grow up.
he would grow up fast, always under the watchful eye of the government. Within two years, he had taken up the appearance of a ten-year-old. He had seemed to have retained all his knowledge in science and mathematics, and the government was eager to press it to their advantage. By 1953, he was meeting regularly with Einstein to proof-check his work and attending MIT, and by 1955, he was back in Roswell, developing state-of-the-art rocket technology with Robert Goddard, father of modern American rocket science. Did you think it was a coincidence that Robert Goddard made Roswell, New Mexico his home? But the tech that Nitero searched for was well outside of his grasp, and although he believed that man possessed the ability, he knew this world was not at all focused. He needed to marshal the world around him. In 1959, Nitero met with and successfully petitioned Senator John Kennedy to, in his persuasive words, go to the moon and, yeah, you know, do other hard things. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. A year later, Kennedy would be elected the 35th president of the United States. Under the cloak of darkness, Nitero began laying the groundwork for what would become NASA and America's march to the moon. Here we see a candid photo of Nitero developing the IBN 726, an instrumental advancement for computers used in the Mercury and Apollo space programs. Though NASA succeeded in their mission, Nitero still found the state of tech woefully far below his advanced needs he would disappear into California, take up residence in a garage, and continue developing things on his own. His tinkering caught the attention of some curious and promising neighborhood kids, one Stevie Jobs and his troubled pal Billy Gates. Together, the three of them would push the boundaries of computer science into the consumer age. They called Nitero the Waz. With the massive noise around the meteoric rise of Apple computers and Microsoft, the U.S. government lost track of Nitero's whereabouts. Some suspect that Gates and Jobs helped him disappear. Some suspect that he is, not coincidentally, in New Mexico, working for Elon at SpaceX, still working to get home. Yet, still, others hold out hope that he finally found what he was looking for and escaped the bounds of this earthly plane. We may not know where exactly in the world Nitero can be found today, but there is one thing that we know for sure, that if you wish to catch a fleeting glimpse, and if it's Tuesday, look toward the horizon at seven, because it means one thing, and one thing for sure. It's fucking game night. It's fucking game night.